with more accusations leveled against Chris Jericho. This is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we move on, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Rambles with notifications on, and don't forget to like the video. Going over his time as a part of the first season for NXT and WWE, Justin Gabriel told Steve Fall of Wrestling News, the original plan was for us to live in a house like Ultimate Fighter and actually compete and do actual athletic challenges. But as the wrestling business go, time ran out, and on the day they were like, let's write a show, and then they were like, we don't even have time to write a show. So we freestyle pretty much everything. That's why the matches and the promos were kind of off because it was pretty much all on the fly. With him last wrestling on December 16th at the New York Wrestling Connection Tour de Circus event in Deer Park, New York, Mikey Whipwreck took 2x to give an update on his health, writing, Woke up feeling like my brain is underwater. Combined with the near-constant headache behind my eyes, it means a day of wishing shh, was over, off, and on all day. Lifetime of post-concussion syndrome makes for a lovely existence. Revealing a regret he had during a match with The Rock, Al Snow said this on Insight with Chris Van Vliet. Shortly after I did a match with The Rock, I remember distinctly Paul Heyman telling me, don't ever let anyone touch the head. Because it's no different from Jake Roberts' snake in the bag, if everyone walks over and picks up the bag, it doesn't mean anything. I'm literally just getting started back in WWE and I let The Rock people's elbow the head. I should have never have done that. I mean, those are mistakes that just put you right off the rails. Taking to XFTRs, Dax Harwood had this to say yesterday about tag team wrestling writing. Over the last few weeks, I've seen people tweet, insert name should be in a singles match, or why are they wasting insert name in a tag team? Y'all, tag team wrestling is a draw, and has been for many years. Just because one person held a monopoly over wrestling and didn't care for tag teams doesn't mean it's a step down. Rock and Roll Express, Road Warriors, Midnight Express, Arn and Tolly, New Age Outlaws, etc. all drew big money. Tag team wrestling can be the main event patting us on the back i feel we've proven that a couple of times now that my crybaby soapbox rant is over tag some of your favorite unsigned tag teams i'll start the dawson brothers the midnight heat i'd love to see everyone else's favorite Talking about his goal in regards to WrestleMania 40, Grayson Waller told The Collection, I think the roster in WWE right now is stacked like from top to bottom. It's kind of crazy. When you look at the SmackDown roster, which I'm a part of, you've got Roman Reigns, who's the champion, and sometimes he's not even there. But those shows are still stacked. So for me personally, it's not about a person for WrestleMania 40. It's more about being on that card. I got to attend last year with NXT. We were up in the box watching it, and I told myself I was sitting with Carmelo Hayes. At the time, we were kind of a little bit closer friends, and I said to him, this is us next year, and we both had that same vibe. So for me personally, it's all about getting on WrestleMania and being on that card. I don't care who's across from me type of thing. Reflecting on his return to Monday Night Raw this week, The Rock wrote on X, It all hits differently. The theme, the crowd, the connection, the reaction, the electricity, the chills. Hell of a way to bring in 2024. Grateful, blessed, and inspired to forever be the people's champ. Sticking with The Rock, this was said regarding his interaction with Jinder Mahal from Raw as Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful reported that The Rock segment went about seven minutes over the scheduled segment.
Going back to that New Japan press conference, Will Ospreay would make an offer to John Moxley ahead of their triple threat match at Wrestle Kingdom that includes David Finley. As New Japan Pro Wrestling Global wrote on X, Moxley said, I am so glad to start 2024 in Tokyo. I love Japan. I love these fans. They took me in years ago and I'll never forget it. I don't care what Finley thinks. Will, I haven't spoken to you in a while. What do you think of all this? Osprey then said, this is a match between me and Moxley. Finley, you don't belong here. I am willing to offer a ceasefire for the first five minutes. Me and you work together to get rid of Finley, and then we can have the singles match we wanted. To sweeten the deal, I have two non-alcoholic beers. Speaking to Sports Illustrated about the previously mentioned Wrestle Kingdom match, David Finley took aim at his opponents, Will Ospreay and John Moxley. I've been a constant for the past nine years. Mox is coming for a cup of coffee. Osprey is leaving soon to wrestle for AEW. They say they love Japan and they say it's so hard to leave. Then they dry their tears with first class tickets home. Recalling the initial concept for the Judgment Day in WWE, Adam Copeland said this on the Not Sam Wrestling Podcast. Well, you know, with the initial inception of the Judgment Day, I really, I wanted it to be these underutilized talents that I thought could be far more than what they were being utilized for. Rhea Ripley is a star, and Damian Priest is a star, and Finn Balor is a star. So initially, it was brought to me like, hey, we want to kind of start a new brood or something that feels somewhat like that. I'm like, who would it be? I was like, Ripley and Priest. Well, we want it to go before. So it's like Balor. Okay, well, then it was like, we want somebody really huge. I was like, okay, all right. And then I got a text two weeks later. How about Balor? I'm like, yep, amazing idea. During that same interview, Adam Copeland noted how much time he feels he has left in the pro wrestling business, saying, I can do this for a limited time because it is all limited. Even though it's been four or five years back now, it's not like I got another four or five in front of me. I know I don't. We're looking at like a two-year window here to be able to get as much done as I can get done, tell as many stories as I can, and try and help talent along the way with that. And I need to be there more and to do that. And I want to be there more to do that because even still, it's not like the schedule was back when I was riding 220 or 250 days a year. At most, it's two times a week, and that's very doable to still be the dad I need to be, to be the partner I need to be. I still have the time and the energy to do that because it's not as all-consuming as it was. I don't let it be as all-consuming as it used to be either, but by the schedule, it just becomes less all-consuming. I wanted to be able to do as much as I could while I could, and that felt like the place I was going to be able to be allowed to do that. That's when it really, I was like, that's where I gotta go. WWE has an idea ready for Hulk Hogan as WrestleVotes writes. WWE plans to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Hulkamania this month with various new merchandise items and collectibles for Hulk Hogan. I'm told an appearance by Hogan is not out of the question, but also not planned as of now. The recognized start of Hulkamania has generally been when he defeated the Iron Sheik for his first WWE Championship on January 23rd, 1984. Hogan also recently posted a training video, which has led to speculation that he could get physical if he returns to a WWE ring. In a video posted to his TikTok account, Logan Paul can be seen with NFL star Patrick Mahomes where he traded his U.S. title for a Super Bowl ring. Mahomes, you're a champ. I'm the U.S. champ. How about my belt for your Super Bowl ring? You had a lemonade prom? We got to do it. Yeah, we can do it. Do it, man. We got a lemonade prime? Oh, fantastic. Do it, man. Let me get this first, though. <laughs> oh, man. This is what I needed right now. Fantastic. This is what I needed. Going straight to the pawn shop, baby. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Taking to social media, Zion Quinn, who would be made a free agent during the WWE draft last year and has not been seen on programming since May 15th, posted this video seemingly hinting at a return.
mentioning what was said during the WWE talent meeting prior to Monday Night Raw. It was reported that one name that has been mentioned a lot internally as filling Kevin Dunn's role is Chris Kaiser, WWE's executive vice president of television, PWInsider.com has been told. Kaiser has been a big figure behind the scenes in the company for close to a decade and would be heavily involved in a lot of the management and overseeing of the TV production side of the company. One person described it as done having the rubber stamp officially on decisions, but that Kaiser had been the one truly in the trenches in recent years. When it comes to an upcoming announcement from Triple H, PW Insider said, in asking around with WWE sources today, we are told there is absolutely nothing to the connection that some are making and that the announcement is not related to a TNA working agreement or anything related to that company. It's yet another case of people putting two and two together and assuming 1,000, no different than the assumption last year that Saudi Arabia was buying WWE and other instances of people who act as if they know something assuming and being incorrect. Posing a question on if he considers himself to be a better sports entertainer than former AEW world champion MJF, Road Dog said on his Oh You Didn't Know podcast. Well, the fact that I've taken this long to answer might already if people riled up. Are they furious by now? I don't know, man. MJF is undeniably great. He's a terrific promo artist. Now, when it comes to in-ring skills, in my opinion, he doesn't quite reach the level of greatness. But then again, I wasn't exactly a wrestling virtuoso, so I don't hold that against him. So let me put it simply for you. The Road Dog believes he's a better sports entertainer than MJF, and there's no slide on MJF. I've met the guy personally. He's a respectful and intelligent young man. He outshines me in various aspects, but I wanted to make this one headline crystal clear. I am a better sports entertainer than MJF. I get it, Road Dog says, and then I'll start trending, and I appreciate that, but if people listen to the whole conversation, they'd understand that I have immense respect for MJF as a human being. We spent some time together, and here's a funny story that ties it back to Grado. I sat with him and Billy while we watched Greater perform at the convention we were attending. We had a blast. He's a great guy, incredibly talented in our field. He would be a tremendous asset in WWE, never say never, but I hope I get the chance to work with him. So in summary, I'll say it again for clarity's sake, I am a better sports entertainer than MJF. Explaining why NXT champion Ilya Dragunov was pulled from the New Year's Evil show, House of Wrestling said after speaking with a tenured WWE source, House of Wrestling has learned that beyond his neck, Dragunov is banged up from 2023 and is taking longer to heal his body than expected. The call to have him removed from the New Year's Evil main event was made sometime this past weekend. As it was described to us, the time frame for Dragunov's return to in-ring action is uncertain. With the likes of Mercedes Monet, Deanna Perrazzo, and Camille serving as possibilities to debut in AEW, it looks like one could be set. As PW Insider noted, there is talk of a new women's talent debuting as soon as tonight. Specifically talking about former Impact Wrestling star Deanna Perrazzo, Sean Rossap said Fightful has learned that before Perrazzo's contract officially expired, there had already been interest expressed by multiple companies. Numerous sources indicated to Fightful that there have been some internal discussions with Perrazzo and they're hopeful they can land her in free agency. We're told that was her preferred landing spot when finishing up with Impact. Speaking about Chris Jericho, given the recent accusation, Paul London said this on Renee Dupree's podcast. Um, I don't know, let me get some. Uh, we, love him, we love him, don't we? We love him. Uh, he's one of those guys like don't meet one of the don't be don't meet people you liked on TV when you were coming up. Like, sadly, that kind of turned out to be the case. Like during my time there, but because I I was a fan, but. You know, that can go away fairly quickly after a few uh, sour interactions um, or, you know, you see, kind of see how people really are from a politicking standpoint. Um, so even if something as minor as, well, I'll wait for Renee to get back because he's actually involved in 
and that's funny how and that way you can get his take on it but uh i mean i i wasn't I, i'm not surprised that the you know i don't know if it's any more info has come out or whatever but i do remember hearing about him bragging about not having signed like any ndas ever and so it just seemed kind of uh like the karma took a u-turn and <laughs> you know i was like oh really guess what this is you know it's like you make people sign NDAs, but you boast of never having signed one. And again, a lot of this is just stuff that's out there that, you know, am I missing something? Has more stuff come out? Has another name come out besides uh, Kylie Ray? Unfortunately, I don't know. Her name's attached to all this, isn't it? It is. Yeah. yeah. No, <clears throat> it's mainly her. So we're only rehashing and respeculating. I was uh, waiting for you to come back because I wanted to talk about our Royal Rumble spot. <clears throat> um, well, let's hear so that. Renee is in the ring already and during my entrance I was going to run in and I think I think the thing was I ran in and I slid in right into uh, the, the old oh. French mom grasps and one, he started two, one, wailing two, one, two. on me. Yeah, or I think you were just starting to kind of wail on me. Something, something, something. I think you put me down at some point, and he would go for uh, he would do the French tickler. Yeah, I go to and pick then you come up. back down. And we had kind of thought, well, what if I kicked you? Because he's like, oh, well, Jericho has to throw me out. Yeah, and I thought, well, how about I kick you, and that stuns you up, and then yeah. there's Chris to throw you out, and Chris went to some lengths, uh, basically to be like, uh, no, it's going to be all me. <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't allowed to kick Renee anymore. Um, fucker, dude. All about yeah. Him. Yeah. I mean, that's ultimately what it comes down to. You know, it's just like you have people who are, um, selfish workers and you have people who are generous workers. It's not to take away from the talent they once had. Um, but it's, um, what kind of legend really are you? You know, are you a legend that's going to just be selfish and a vampire to the business and just suck and suck and suck and suck and suck figuratively, literally, I don't know. Um, or are you going to be kind of more of a cornerstone and somebody who's proud to share and give back and hopefully water these plants that'll turn into, you know, a, a massive jungle um, of, of strong, healthy plants and trees that you, you helped kind of, sow these seeds by by helping uh giving back you know and sharing your experiences in a positive healthy way uh not being a complete fucking mark for yourself um which you know i stress that to anybody who trains with me you can ask any of them don't be a fucking mark for yourself um, that's when it'll start going south real fast so uh, never liked marks people who are marks for themselves and mind you like we're all marks of different degrees we're all marks for different degrees we wouldn't be doing this shit um so it's not to say you know it's just there's completely different kinds of marks but but when someone is a hardcore just a fucking mark for themselves in and out of the business just to just waking up just just giving themselves a, a daily facial um it just uh <laughs> there's something going on there you better believe these people are not good people they're not good people so mm -hmm. all i'm gonna say about that shit. i agree and this was your pro wrestling news update i hope you're all having a great day thank you so much for watching and i will see y'all later